In this video, I go over three common mistakes colored pencil artists tend to make, and I'm going to talk about ways that you can overcome these mistakes if you are making them. Coming up. If you are interested in learning all about drawing realistic wildlife and pets, I have one to four hour long real-time drawing tutorial videos available over on my Patreon. For just $10 a month, you will have access to a growing library of drawing tutorials, as well as a new tutorial each month, plus many other rewards. You can sign up from the link in the description of this video or find me over on Patreon at Jessica Matheny. Now, I want to include this disclaimer that what I discuss in this video is not intended to pick on anyone or to offend anybody. We all make mistakes and part of learning to become better is to recognize those mistakes and implementing change to do better. It doesn't mean you're bad or anything. I'm just pointing out the mistakes I see and what can be changed about it to help you improve your art. Now, the first mistake that colored pencil artists make is not using colors with black. Black isn't just black, it may have purples, blues, reds, browns, and yellows. So just grabbing that black colored pencil and doing your whole drawing of say, a black dog with using it, isn't going to do it justice in looking realistic. What you will get is a flat looking drawing with less depth than it could have had had you used colors. I totally would like to have an example of an entire drawing done like this, without using any colors in it and just a black pencil, but I don't have any drawings of my own that I've done this with, and I don't want to waste time and supplies just to give an example. So if you've been around looking at other colored pencil artists work long enough, you will easily be able to spot the ones that aren't using colors with their black animals that they draw. Especially if you use colors with yours. It's way more obvious to see that because you know exactly how things should be in achieving that realistic color look because you do it yourself. And when others aren't doing it, it is much easier to spot. If you haven't, go have a look around and see if you can spot the differences. It's easier to notice if reference photos are also provided to see with the drawing because then you can compare them both side to side. How to combat a flat colored black animal is to get a good base layer down of the colors you see. Less is more when applying them though. What I do is I apply just a few light coats of the colors I see in, in the reference photo. I blend it out and add one layer of black and then blend it out. I then judge if I've got enough color at that point and add more if I need to along with another light layer of black. And then if I am satisfied that I have the colors right, I darken it to the correct value with just black. The next mistake is choosing the wrong paper. Depending on what paper you choose to draw with your colored pencils on can kind of make or break your artwork. Choosing a paper that is too smooth won't allow you to be able to get enough layers on and get the colors or values accurate. And choosing a paper that is too textured can make it hard to get those details like hair or fur. A happy middle ground is what works best for colored pencils. And I find that smooth paper works best for fur where you want a lot of those details with burnished blending. Burnished blending being that you just use the colored pencils with a firm hand to blend colors together. And it works great for fur because it's all a bunch of just hair strokes with just a single stroke and no blending. When working on other subjects that have smooth surfaces or other textures to them, I find that medium textured paper works best because you have a better opportunity to get your colors accurate with being able to add more layers than smooth tooth papers will allow. And solvent blending works really great with this because it allows you to blend the colors into all the tooth of the paper and add more over it once it dries. I've heard that using pastel matte works really great for colored pencils and also works great if you use solvent for blending as well, but I have yet to try it. When I do, I will let you know how it goes. The last mistake is not planning out layers. Knowing what colors to add and when can be kind of confusing sometimes, but at least if you add your layers in little amounts, any mistakes you make can easily be rectified. But when you add too much darker colors down first, it throws off your ability to add in lighter colors and get things more accurate. You can add light colors over the top, but it just won't look the same as if the lighter colors were down first. In this example, I used two shades of green and 
the one where I put the lighter shade down first, it looks like more of a smooth color blend than the other one. When you add too much dark down first, it is of course going to be more obvious and harder to deal with if there is more of a difference in values between the colors being put down. With these greens, it's not quite as obvious as it would be as if I had a darker toned green and maybe even just a lighter shade of green. And also, if I were to put down brown and cream, if I put down the brown first and went over that with cream, I'm not gonna be able to get a good cream color in that. And it will actually add an opaque white coat over the brown as I put it down and it won't look too nice. So it is important to identify early on a general idea of what colors on your reference photo there are so that you can add in all of your lighter values or colors first. And when it comes to white areas, especially with fur, white just doesn't go down well over darker colors. It is translucent and the colors underneath will show through. So it's important to try your very best to preserve any white areas of your work and, and an easy way to do that is to add a protective white colored pencil layer over the paper. Just be aware of where you place it because it's harder to go over this white base layer with other colors later. As you can see with this example here, I've got white down first and I'm going over it with a black colored pencil. And as I go over the area that is white, the black isn't quite as dark as it is on the paper because there's that, that barrier of white blocking it. Colored pencil work is all about preciseness and layering. Once a stroke or layer is down, it's kind of permanent and can't be undone or gone over like paint to fix it if you've made any mistakes. So always be aware of where you apply what colors to avoid messing things up for yourself down the line. If you want to learn more colored pencil tips, you should check out the top right video. Otherwise, you might find the video YouTube suggests for you more interesting in the bottom right. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.